Hi everyone, my name is Ben and this is the Boss Laser. This is the LS3655. It is a 150 watt CO2 laser with a capacity of 4x8 if uh, you utilize the pass through. Now to get started on this machine, first step is always to make sure that the work area is clear and that there aren't any other projects existing in the space. Next you take the key, start her up, and make sure to flip these switches here. It's for the fan and the chiller. If you don't have those switched then the gantry will move, the laser head will move, it will look like it's doing all of the things it needs to do but it will not be cutting. It needs to be cooled in order to operate. Once it's done its homing operation and is all set, we can insert our material. There's a small red dot at the laser point that you can use to calibrate to place your material. If you can't see it, you can flip this switch, dims the light, makes the laser a little more visible. Make sure you get it lined up. Next step, you need to autofocus the laser. It has a specific focal point at which it does its best work. If you're outside of that, it's just going to burn or ruin your piece. In order to do that, you pull up the menu, go down to autofocus, it's as simple as that. You need to do that every time you put a different piece of material in here or it won't be correct. Then we close the lid. It's very, very important that you keep the lid closed when the laser is running. It won't run if you lift the lid, but just in case, nobody needs to be irradiated. There's a lot of real high energy particles going on in here, so keep the lid down. And with that, all that's left to do is pull up Lightburn on the PC, import your project you're trying to work on, calibrate your settings, and then you're off to the races. So we'll jump onto the PC and figure that out. All right, and this is Lightburn, which is the software from which you can do all of your laser cutting and engraving. You can either open an existing Lightburn project or you can import an image to be used. We're going to import one, which you can do by either clicking this arrowed page here or going File, Import. I'm going to select an image. Here we've got an image. You can work with this, but it's a lot easier for the system if you trace it first so that it knows where the lines are. Right click and hit trace, that pulls up this dialog where you can adjust the cutoff, which is the bottom end of things it will accept, and the threshold, which is the top, the top line of things it will accept. This is just a simple line drawing, so it's not particularly complicated. Click OK, and it's removed everything except for those lines. Now we need to actually make a cut, which we do here on the cuts and layers. This is listed as a black line, which as you can see here we have all of these colors available that can color code the cuts to do different things based on what you want to achieve. Whether you want to lightly engrave or cut all the way through, that's where you can dictate that. For this we want all of these lines to be the same. I'm going to add a border around it so that I can actually cut out the piece from the wood that I'm using. I will just use the rectangle tool, drag a rectangle around it, and you can add a radius by clicking this radius button and then clicking the corners. You can adjust the radius here as well. And in order to make sure that these things are centered, go back up to the selection window, highlight them both, align vertical center, align horizontal center. That puts them together. I'm going to color code this line as a blue line, which gives us a different drop down here that blue line is going to be a full cut through. So I will go into it and specify the speed and feed I need for that. If I'm using 8th inch birch plywood, then I know roughly the settings I need to use. I want it to go at about 20 millimeters per second speed and about 85% power. That should be enough to get through. Always test these cuts on a smaller scrap piece that's the same material and thickness because this can take trial every time and you don't want to mess up your final product. So I have that set as a blue which is going to cut out the piece from the stock and 
the black lines I have as a fill. So that does a raster, which sends the laser back and forth quickly, turning it on and off over the parts you want to burn. And we've got it set to 400 millimeters per second, whipping across quite fast, and 80% power, which I'm actually going to dial back just a bit. I think I probably only want 60. So once that's done, we need to make sure that these are in the proper order. Anytime you're making a cut that goes all the way through, you want to make sure that you do it from inside to outside. By which I mean, if I was cutting out this line here in the middle of the A, I would want to do that first. If I cut out the entire piece, then it will drop from the stock. It will move slightly. You want that to be your last move so that the laser knows where everything is. And once we get this, we can highlight all of the pieces that we need. I like to use a, an origin of the top left corner. This is where the laser is going to work from. You can put it in the center or any of the other points. I like to have the top left. With this, I can click frame and the laser will physically run the path that it needs to cover to make sure that what you're looking to cut will fit on your material. And once we confirm that it fits, all we need to do is hit start and it will begin the process. All right, so that's basically all we need. I'll select these two and then we can hit preview up here. <laughs> I've done something wrong. All right, and I just realized that I have this on fill mode, which is not what I want. If I want to cut out the piece, then I want to go to line. The various modes that you can use to actually engrave or laser them are line, which just traces the line, fill, which rasters, goes back and forth quickly between the lines to fill it in fully, fill and line, which does both, first rasters and then follows a line around the outside, which if you do this mode, be sure to adjust the settings properly. So if you go into the line after fill section, that's where you can dictate the speed that it will follow after it's already done the raster. You want this to be much slower. 100's probably even too fast. The fourth mode is offset fill, which instead of rastering side to side, will raster in the shape of the object. So if you have a circle, it would raster in a circle to fill in the entirety of the circle. Not useful for us right now. We just want the first line to be in fill and the second line to be in line. And that's all we need. So if we go up here to the preview, we can see how it will look. The red is traversal line. If we click play, we can see how it works. Rasters back and forth. The red, it is not activating the laser and the black it is. It's gonna take a while. We can see here the cut distance, the rapid moves, and most importantly, the total time estimated. This at the size that it is would take approximately 22 minutes to cut. So let's skip ahead a little bit. It'll finish the raster. And then it finally does its outline there. That's a fair bit slower because it's got to blow through all of the plywood. And that's all there is to it. Send this to the laser cutter with start. And if it isn't exactly right, then you modulate your settings a little bit and run another test. Uh, once you get it exactly how you want it, then use it on your actual stock. Do not ruin your actual project trying to figure out the cuts. Now you may be wondering what kind of materials are safe to use with the laser cutter. Anything wood, acrylic, fiberglass, foam, paper, cardboard, anything like that is perfectly fine. Metals are mostly okay, except for shiny metals like stainless steel, unless you do something to mitigate this shininess. If that's something that you're not sure about, then contact someone who can. Uh, but there are processes that can help handle that. The thing you cannot, absolutely cannot burn in the laser is PVC. Polyvinyl chloride, when heated, releases chlorine gas. Do not do. You should never heat PVC. Anything else? Not anything else. Those previous things listed, totally okay. I'm gonna include a table here to show you what you can't cut and what you can. Just refer to that.